YouTube, how the fuck you doing? Hey guys, Nate Shot today. I'm bringing a brand new video. I hope you guys are all having a fantastic day. I am joined by our newly appointed general manager, Papa Smithy, coming all the way from, wait, where were you at? You were in Paris? Were you in South Korea? Where'd you come from? I'm kind of a man with no country. For the last couple of months, I've been commuting between Seoul, which is where I've been based out of as a caster for four and a half years. Since then, I've been over at the World Championships, so over in Berlin for a couple of weeks. Came to LA to meet everybody and, and get Brought up to speed on 100 Thieves Matters, so it feels like man of no country, but maybe more specifically, man of no time zone. Because uh, I'm just jet lagged wherever I go. Well, we just went through daylight savings, so I don't think I have a time zone either. Have you ever seen The Terminal with Tom Hanks? No. Holy I've shit about it, but not watched it. Well, it's literally a man with You should watch it, directed by Steven Spielberg. Great film. I'm kind of the Tom Hanks of League of Legends, so. And you look like him a lot. There's a lot of striking similarities. Listen guys, this is super important because we want to give you a rundown of what 2020 is gonna look like, the role that Papa Smithy will play in the LCS program, and really quickly, honestly, talk about 2019. I think throughout the year, and even in 2018, a lot of the roster decision-making that we made was primarily the uh, responsibility of the coaching staff mm -hmm. and the business team. And I think what we found to be really important moving forward is that we have somebody who is permanently thinking about League of Legends. So we have Papa Smithy as a general manager, and he's gonna talk about his role and what that will look like in 100 Thieves. But we also, as you guys saw in our CSGO announcement video, and we also hired a brand new VP of Esports, Jacob Toft Anderson. And so we are really excited because now we have two people who are absolutely dedicated to thinking about esports and thinking about roster construction in all of our titles. And obviously League of Legends is our biggest investment across the board. And so we needed just one person who was thinking about how do we make this team better? And that's where you come in to play. And I think that was the, the most attractive thing because when the offer came through or the idea came through, journaling down into like, what is a general manager, especially in esports, is a pretty tricky thing because I think that role has been kind of an umbrella term for people who are very involved in roster construction or don't even touch, touch the roster construction. Um, and that was actually the first kind of battle when it came to considering joining 100 Thieves was actually kind of defining my side of, of what a GM is and where 100 Thieves is at and whether that actually matched. Because if it didn't, like I loved casting, like it's something that I feel really passionate about, but like the, idea of a GM, specifically kind of more the sports GM model, was the role that I was kind of coveting when it came to making this transition to the team side. And thankfully, it, it really matched up. So it's, it's a pretty kind of long list of, of responsibilities and it's always ever growing. But I think the first thing to clarify and something that you mentioned already is that I am the general manager of 100 Thieves League of Legends. I am not gonna be you know, across all titles. I'm not gonna be involved in the CSGO side. Probably gonna have some, probably gonna have to duck in there just cause my Aussie boys the are Aussies. there. And that part yeah, is boys. like, exactly. Like you guys are making moves yeah, the and boys. hiring Australians. Like there's like what, seven, eight of us now? Yeah, you guys are overtaking our organization. That's right. And I'm kind of okay with Let's it. Let's get that ratio up further. So gonna definitely be looking into that. Yeah, I, I, I'm very excited just because of all the work that I've seen you do and the reputation that you hold within the League of Legends community, not only are you great on camera, which is obviously very important for 100 Thieves because we are very invested in content, you guys know this, but you really understand the game, you understand players, you can dissect the mechanics and decision making of players. And I think you have a umbrella or a high level view of really all the regions that come in and out of worlds. And so you have a great eye for talent. There's really many skill sets that you have that fit really well into 100 Thieves culture. I think really quickly too, that we still need to continue to talk about 2019 briefly. You can speak on this too and maybe give us an evaluation of our performance, but I've always been proud of the things that we've accomplished at this organization. I think all the players that have come and go and all the coaches that have come and go have represented our organization to the best of their ability. And I'm proud of what we did accomplish, but I will say I was disappointed with our finish in 2019. And I told you guys from day one when we announced that we'd be a part of LCS franchising, that our goal was to absolutely win. That was our biggest priority. Um, and we have fallen short in every season that we've been here. Not only do we wanna win an LCS championship, but we have goals and aspirations to win a world championship or else we wouldn't have paid $10 million to be a part of this league. Sure. I'm not here to do anything half-assed and I don't think any of our coaches or players were either. 
uh, but it's just unfortunate the way that things played out. So I think it's it's necessary that we talk about the departure of Neil Prali Hamad. He's a great friend, and I think he did a fantastic job of representing 100 Thieves in and out of the game. And he came in in the first two years and really created a legacy that I think will live on for a very long time. It was just a joy to work with him. Uh, we think it's best now, and you could probably speak to it a little bit better than I can, uh, that we move on. And I wish him all the best. And I think he knows that we want him to continue to be successful in anything that he does down the road. And it was a great chapter, but now it's time to close that that book and, and, and start anew. And from a step removed, because obviously I'm only joining 100 Thieves now and I've been watching the story from the outside, he brought a new organization team, one of the new teams that came through in franchising to Worlds in the first year, which is something that 100 Thieves will, have, will always hold as a really big thing in their history. Uh, and I think when it comes to evaluating 2019, definitely I look back at kind of and chat to people who were involved in the off-season choices there. And I actually can't fault the concept for the roster this year, which is 100 Thieves finished second overall in terms of circuit points and felt they were close to that championship that every single org is building towards. You can't just look at the results and say, oh, that was the wrong way to go. You can say, based on the available information and the minds in the room, felt they were close, topped up. That's what you want. You don't want a team that's gonna sit on talent that isn't actually auditioning for winning it all. Mm -hmm. You want to always be aggressive and trying to move towards that. And in the end, it didn't work out. Right. And now it's a case of with kind of the first era of 100 Thieves, that first two years of LCS coming to a close and, and probably leaving is definitely a, a sign of that. It's a case of really goal setting for what 100 Thieves can be in the future because two years is not a lot of years in League of yeah, Legends and there's many more to come. And now it's just continuing to try to be excellent. And that's one thing that I'm confident that you and Jacob are going to help us do. Um, the reason why 2020 is really important for us is because we're going to have a brand new facility where you will be working day in and day out of with our brand new coach who is actually going to be speaking with you guys here shortly. But we're really all in. I, I know that I've said that before, but we are all in. We are, we're giving our players the best resources possible to be the best player they can be when they step on stage. Uh, you working so closely with our coaching staff every single day. I don't think that there's any issues that will fall through the crack and we're going to have checks and balances to make sure that this team is performing at the most optimal levels um, every single day and every single weekend that we step on stage at the LCS. I really want you to be able to speak to everybody at home that's supporting 100 Thieves. Just the due diligence that you've been um, doing this offseason. Obviously, you've been busy with your casting roles and just being a representative of the LCS and um, all the regions, but you've done your homework yep. and uh, I think it's important that you guys at home understand how much research and how much roster construction exercises that we've actually been going through. And I think it's a really important thing for messing with the fans to be transparent. As a caster, I always felt like one of the things I really focused on was integrity. If it's a great game, let's call it a great game. If it's a bad game, you kind of have to also message that clearly because if you if every game is great none of them are great and that's an incredibles quote mm -hmm. but i'll take it there and make it my own wait is it uh, say it again i think so it's from the incredibles say it again it's basically the gist of if everything is great nothing is great oh. which you know do you see incredibles too yeah that's yeah. right that's all right the but, transparency side i think is important and when it comes to to my role we talked about again general manager but we haven't kind of defined all the all the things i'm working on the most obvious one is roster construction. There are some teams where that's an owner thing. There's some teams where that's a head coach thing. No? I won't. You've given me notes already. Like you've said some names you want. Well. I'm, I can't promise any of them yet, but you said, you said some names. Somebody's got to sign this <laughs> Why not us? Cut that, cut that, cut that. But basically when I was sitting down and kind of defining the role as I alluded to before, my take was roster construction, absolutely want to be in there. When it comes to staff, want to be in that kind of player culture and like what sort of team 100 Thieves, what does it mean to be on 100 Thieves League of Legends outside of just wins and losses? That's something I'm very interested in, something that I'm sure you and I will bounce ideas yep. off on. Uh, but it's further than that, like branding, marketing, basically anything that touches the League of Legends team and sphere, you got us. I want to be involved in. And that was, that was actually a demand I made is, I want to be, you Google 100 Thieves League of Legends, all the results come up, I better have been there. And that's, that was kind of my thing is to, to leave where I was and to come to 100 Thieves. It was, I don't want to be a figurehead. I don't want to just be the guy on the videos talking and smiling and, and pretending that everything's fine when it's not. 
I want to celebrate when we do the great things and I want to be frank about where we're at when we're not doing well and explain how we're going to move towards the next phase. Transparency, communication, yep. Yep. utmost importance for Papa Smithy as mm -hmm. the new GM of 100 Thieves, but hopefully you will still be looking in the camera and smiling. Wow, that part I can't, you know, that's definitely one of my... Yeah, uh, beautiful smile, man, you look good. Okay. Tom Hanks of eSports, let's go. <laughs> While I'll be, I guess, the talking head on videos that maybe you were in past iterations, you don't get to be a stranger. I'm still going to be bringing you in. You're still going to need to be a real voice on these. these well, I want to be there, man. Yeah, we want you there. I didn't get into esports just so I could take a back seat. I want to be a part of these players' careers and really hey. driving them to want more and to be the best player they can be. Do you want an exclusive thing I actually haven't pre-prepped and told you before? When I speak to players, one of the big draws is your clarity and, and the, the person that you put forward there. Mm -hmm. People want to play under Nate Shot. Come on, keep it going. It's true. What else you got? I'm not even buttering you up. I already signed my contract. I don't need a bonus. Like, I'm just being real here. Hey, you win this world, you get a nice bonus. Well, that's a, that's a multi-year project there. Okay. That's right. definitely a multi-year project. Well, on that note, this is a perfect opportunity. I want you for the first time ever, although we've been talking throughout this entire video, I want you to speak directly to Tell all of our supporters there and let them know what you're here to do and what your goals are and what they can expect from 100 Thieves League of Legends over the course of the future. So when it comes to 100 Thieves League of Legends, the very simple goal is, is to win championships. But the thing is, winning championships doesn't necessarily mean we'll win spring season instantly, we've got the stacked roster, it's gonna go there. That absolutely is a possibility and we're exhausting Every telephone, we even had some like landlines that didn't even know they were around, but we're using whatever we can to scour the world for the best possible talent to win championships. But I want to be real with the fans. There's very much a world where it's the stacked roster, it's all the names you know, and we're pushing for championships in day one. And that's the easy sell, right? I tell you the names, you know all of them, they're sick and we go from there. There's also a world where we look at the available talent and we say, okay, the talent for spring season 2020 that is actually gonna win us that title might not be available to us. We're coming in and we have a lot of moving pieces on our side. What we can say is that we have a very extensive scouting network. We're looking around the world for players who can actually be top of their roles in it. Because you need top players in every role. It's not just the one sick import. And I think that's really been shown in international tournaments in the past is you can't just get the one or two great players and then just fill it out. Like I think it's so important to be thoughtful about where the power can be to have a concentrated team that can actually combine five sets of strengths in order to achieve success. And in that case, I'm absolutely down for going for a roster that's developmental, but looking to actually push for championships in a confined space. Like we're gonna communicate it directly with you, with management, et cetera, and be very transparent about this is why we chose the roster we did. We didn't fall into a roster. It was all manicured and actually put together with a goal, clear with our goal setting. And then if it is developmental, i.e. it's not 2-0 every week from spring season week one, we're gonna be clear about what we were looking for, what we were transparently kind of evaluating the team based on. And look, we're only talking voices. Like you guys at home will be heard and will absolutely be on the conversation. But from our side, we will always be transparent and clear. And at the end of the day, the goal is still the same. Maybe the timescale changes, but I am 100% aligned and willing to guarantee that we will be pushing for championships within the foreseeable future. I think Papa Smithy is the perfect example for you guys to understand that we're doing everything we can to bring home some championships for 100 Thieves and one day a world championship. Guys, we're all in, all right? Hopefully this shows what our goals are and, and, and what we're here to do and hopefully you guys believe us because the one thing I like about him is not trying to hide nothing. We're gonna be fully open, fully transparent and we're gonna communicate with you so you are with us every step of the way. Thank you so much for joining me. Pleasure. Like I said, I know you are busy. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, hopefully this makes a lot of sense. And hopefully you guys are excited as I am for the future of 100 Thieves League Legends. Hope you guys have a fantastic day in YouTube. We'll see you fucking later. Come on. Um, Papa Smithy is now going to take over the reins. Here you go. Those are my okay. in, in, invisible okay. reins. You okay. just hold them like that. All right. Christmas is coming up. Feels like I'm either driving a car or getting the no, horse ready. No, Santa's sleigh. These okay. are the reins. All right. I'm handing them over okay. because I think uh, there's no better person in esports that we can put the LCS program in that person's hands than you.